All right. Uh, welcome to the second pre-recorded lecture on geology of fuels, and uh, we have been discussing about the elements of of an active petroleum system, specifically for conventional plays. And so far, we have looked at source rock, reservoir rock, cap rock, trap. Yeah, and cap rock, okay? We have not talked about trap migration pathways. We have talked a little bit about maturation. Uh, so in case of source rock, we said it is very important to have uh, um, sufficient TOC, total organic carbon. And with respect to the nature of the kerogen, we have subdivided source rock into three categories, type one, type two, and type three. And then we also said that it will need a specific uh, depth window in which that source rock must be cooked so that the hydrocarbon gets cracked. Then in terms of reservoir rock, we talked about the basic uh, properties which are necessary to make it a successful reservoir rock. <coughs> <coughs> and we said that the properties are porosity, permeability, neck to gross, um, hydrocarbon saturation, um, and so on and so forth. So we talked about ultimate recovery. We talked about enhanced oil recovery, enhanced gas recovery. Um, we talked about how we can determine uh, hydrocarbon contact, oil gas contact, gas oil contact, gas water contact, oil water contact, uh, and uh, how pressure data can help us to determine such contact height, how resistivity logs can help us in determining such contact. We then talked about uh, seal or the cap rock, which is the impermeable rock that stops the vertical migration of, of hydrocarbon further away from the reservoir. And we said that it must be of extremely low permeability. Um, we said the cap rock can be um, shell, salt, chalk. We gave an example of a salt source rock from the, sorry, salt, uh, salt, uh, salty cap rock from the North Sea, which we said is Zechstein salt. I hope you remember such discussions. If not, please go back and refresh yourself with the, uh, with the, with the presentations um, that are uploaded before. All right. So today we will discuss the an, another very important element of a of a of a of a successful conventional hydrocarbon system and that is what we talk call as traps okay so what is a trap the trap is a geological configuration that stops or traps hydrocarbon to move away from the reservoir, right? So it's not essentially a rock. So we know reservoir rock, we know source rock, we know cap rock, but trap is not a rock. Trap is a set of geological configuration that will stop the hydrocarbon to move away from the reservoir that that is in the target right so as we have explained in the first class if you remember that here is my reservoir rock and we said this is with high porosity and permeability so it has high pi and k pi stands for porosity and k stands for permeability and then we have we have the cap rock on the top of it, 
say in this particular case it is L, okay, and this is low pi low k, low porosity, low permeability, and the hydrocarbon is moving from the source rock. Okay, moving from the source rock, it hits the reservoir rock and then tries to move up, but it finds the cap rock. Hence, it's, it starts a lateral migration. And then, if this is a flat structure, the flat structure, the cap rock is stopped here, then this will further migrate away, and the hydrocarbon will not be stored here in the pore space. So we need to develop some sort of structure, okay, some sort of structure in the reservoir rock and in the cap, okay, that will, so the, the structure will be developed in the, uh, both in the cap rock and in the reservoir rock, so that this sort of lateral migration is essentially stopped. This lateral migration must be stopped, right? So, let us see what are the different types of combinations by which we can stop such migration, right? So, perhaps are broadly subdivided into two categories. One we call as structural trap. And the other one is called stratigraphic trap. Okay. And this is sometimes also called geomorphic trap. So structural traps. Let us, for the time being, just uh, concentrate on structural traps. We will we will come to the stratigraphic trap in a in a moment, but let us first discuss structural trap. Okay, so structural traps are traps formed by deformation. Traps formed by deformation. So you apply some sort of stress on the rock, and the rock changes its shape. So what do I mean by deformation? Deformation is change in shape due to application. of stress. Stress is essentially force per unit area. This is what is stress. So that is what a structural trap is. Okay. And structural trap can be further subdivided into fault related trap, fault related trap and old related so let us first look at the fold related trap and then we will come to the fault related trap okay so let us first look at the fold related trap The most common fold related, related trap is an anti line or an antiform. 
there are some difference between an anticline and antiform uh, and you will understand that uh, later on but for the time being let us use them, them synonymously so we are referring to a structure which closes upward we are referring to a fold so this is a fold as you can see let me just draw the fold properly first so here maybe another layer here. So it's a multi-layered strata. Was like A, B, e, C, D. That was before deformation, and then we have applied some stress. In this case, horizontal compression, which has resulted this beautiful anticlinal fold. For the sake of argument, let us say that this layer A, which is at the top, is a shell. So in terms of petroleum system, this is my cap rock. So that will essentially stop the hydrocarbon to get out of the system. Get out of so the vertical migration will be stopped. Now let us say, and everything below, everything below here is sandstone. Everything here is sandstone. So B, C, D, they are all sandstones. So they are all sand. By the way, sandstone is often abbreviated as SST. And shell, so this is shell. Shell is abbreviated as SH, right? So this is sandstone. Now, let us say hydrocarbon is moving upward due to migration. And this is slowly. So as I said, so this was earlier was filled with water, right? Earlier was completely filled with water, as we have discussed before. And then slowly, the water is being replaced by hydrocarbon. Water is being replaced by hydrocarbon slowly. Yeah. And how far it will actually fill this particular trap? It will fill this particular trap till this positive curvature of the anticline becomes the negative curvature of the syncline, right? So this will kind of be filled up up to this. Okay. So here you can see this is the inflection point. This is the inflection point of the of the of the anticline. Where the positive curvature is actually becoming a negative curvature because I am expecting the presence of a syncline here, right? So the positive curvature is and also in this side, I'm expecting incline so my positive curvature is changing to the negative curvature so up to this till the inflection point the uh, the trap has the capacity to contain hydrocarbon okay. so with respect to with respect to um with respect to your uh, petroleum geology terms 
this inflection point so the up to which the hydrocarbon gets filled up yeah this is called spill point as if this is like a like a bowl and then up to the till the bowl is full the hydrocarbon will be filled okay till the bowl is full this the hydrocarbon will be filled and once the uh, bowl is bowl is completely full hydrocarbon will spill out okay so what it means that if i if i have if i just kind of uh, if i kind of you know uh, zoom out a little bit i kind of uh, you know go, i kind of zoom out a little bit so what i will observe say for example i have one anticline syncline another anticline another syncline like this i have a structure i'm just zooming out okay so what it means that this will be filled up to this will be filled up to this this will be filled up to this. so but the syncline will not have any hydrocarbon and these will be my individual fill points right these are my fill points so it's it's essentially analogy is like you have a bowl and you have filled it up to filled it up to its spilled okay now in this particular example i have shown you that the hydrocarbon is completely up to the spill point hence such structure is called filled to spill i mean it's completely full the hydrocarbon column so by the way this height is called h c or hydrocarbon column height hc so h with a h with a affix c and h and c uh, side by side together is hydrocarbon so this is the hydrocarbon column height if the hydrocarbon column height is all the way up to the spill point we call it a fill to spill trap right and this is how an anticlinal trap works now if it happens that you know it's not fill to spill that the the hydrocarbon is we just draw back the reservoir of course is only up to it has only filled up to certain point which is up to this okay so here is my say this is gas and then this is water so how would i call this this one we will call it gwc right because this is gas water contact right now say for example it has only filled up to this and certainly this is not up to the spill point okay so this is called an underfilled structure under field now why would a structure be underfilled okay and there are two reasons behind it okay and i'll just write them down here for you structure is underfill because number 1 not enough hydrocarbon supply so that means the source rock which we have here okay, which is a shale again you know has not produced enough hydrocarbon 
so that everything can be filled up up to the spill okay. and number two reason is this cap rock is leaked cap rock is leaking cap rock leaking is also sometime called top seal breach because this is called cap rock this is also called top seal because it seals the top so it is called top seal the top seal bridge if there is say for example if i have fractures in the top seal then also the hydrocarbon from here can leak out <clears throat> so this is how we describe this structure, right? We, this is how we will describe the anticlinal trap. Now, <clears throat> suppose we look at a different structure now. Let's let's just move ahead from from the from to the to another type of structural trap and that is what we call as fault related trap for example I had a set of inclined layers. Why I am saying inclined, I'll explain in a moment. And then, of course, the top layer is L. The middle layer is sandstone, which is my reservoir. This is shell. This is this is sandstone. This is shell, and then again I have another layer of shell. Okay. So maybe this is this is my cap rock, right? and this is kind of sandwiched between two shells, right? Now, for example, I have developed a fault here and how would my fault then look like the fault will then look like here is my fault plane this is my Shell or the top seal layer. And then the so and and we you know this is what we call as my foot wall. And so the others other side of the fault will be called hanging wall. And say for the time being that my the shell another color. Now, this is the configuration. Here is my fault. Now, <clears throat> this is shell. This is sandstone. This is also sandstone. And this is shell as well. Now let us say here somewhere was my source rock. Here somewhere was my source rock. And from the source rock, hydrocarbon is migrating up. It's migrating up. So what will happen? 
this was all filled with water this will keep on filling with hydrocarbon right now you see the migration of the hydrocarbon is stopped stopped by this shell layer this is my top seal and the migration of the hydrocarbon in this side has been topped by stopped by this fault yeah has been stopped by the fault because on the other side of this sandstone reservoir i have shell so hydrocarbon cannot migrate through it okay it cannot migrate through it so it will keep on filling and it will keep on filling till you know i kind of find the reservoir is losing its dip okay. so here this will be my fill point and such traps are called fault related Such traps are called but they are also structural trap. Now, what happens? The what is the second type of trap? That is what we call as stratigraphic trap. Suppose I have a shelly layer. This layer is fully shelly. And then in between, I have one layer which does something like this. Okay. And this layer is sandstone. What this layer is then is sedimentologically, this is called a pinch out structure. Because of the change in sedimentary fascis, sedimentary depositional environment, what I am observing that there is a Sand lens, there is like a big sand body kind of sitting inside a shell. Okay? It's kind of encapsulated by this shell there. And then also, if I start filling this one with hydrocarbon, what I will observe that it will, sorry, uh, let me use another color. This will be quite filled with hydrocarbon. And the migration of the hydrocarbon will be stopped right, because of the presence of shell around it. And such type of traps are called stratigraphic traps. Okay. So if we go back to the presentation for a moment, you can see here. <coughs> Both all types of um, traps are essentially described. You can see here this is an anticlinal trap. This is a pinch out, the fault related trap. But remember, a fault related trap can never can never actually be there if it doesn't have any dip. Okay. So to create that structure, there must be some sort of deep in the layer okay you see this is an unconformity related trap because of the presence of the unconformity you know and essentially changing the rock type also the, in this uh, discrete sand body uh, hydrocarbon can can be trapped 
and here the anticline has formed because of the uprise of a salt dome now the fault related trap can be further subdivided into few categories okay so let us start with uh, the the first one okay let let us start with the third one what you can see here suppose this this uh, dotted layer is my permeable porous reservoir layer and the porous and permeable reservoir layer because of the presence of the fault has been completely displaced and because of such displacement was uh, what has happened everything around that reservoir rock is non reservoir so hence in this particular uh this type of environment what can happen the structure can be fully filled to spill now in here what you are observing that the displacement is not that high so there is a little bit of there is a little bit of area which is actually uh, kind of puts a puts a barrier so there there is only a part of the of the reservoir which is displaced everything is not displaced so here the hydrocarbon can leak but so the hydrocarbon is only been accumulated up to this point okay and this type of structure we call as juxtaposition leak <clears throat> and this is underfit because it although it has a juxtaposition leak but it has not filled up to the spill point in this case this is the spill point because here it will spill out right but here you can see underfill because it has not essentially went all the way up to the spill point the spill point would have been here right and this is what we call a juxtaposition seal you can see here although that reservoir is not fully displaced but and there is juxtaposition between these two reservoirs through the fault so ideally this this would have been my spill point ideally ideally this would have been my spill point right and then sorry this uh, yeah this would have been my spill my uh, my apologies this would have been my spill point this this red mark would have been my spill point but you can see that it has gone beyond the spill point because uh, i mean so that means the property of the fault has changed in such a way that the hydrocarbon even if it is juxtaposed with uh, even if the reservoir is juxtaposed with the hanging wall reservoir it cannot actually leak out right it cannot leak out so that's that's something which we call as juxtaposition seal anyway we will discuss about this in in uh, greater details when we talk about fault seal analysis okay. so now next is about hydrocarbon migration so migration means the movement of hydrocarbon from the source rock to the reservoir okay movement of hydrocarbon from the source rock to the reservoir and how it happens it can happen through faults and fractures it can happen through simple permeable rock units and it is upward anti gravity movement simply because hydrocarbon has lower density or lower specific gravity than water so because all other spaces are essentially filled with water the most of the upper crust it has to replace water to move up right so it replaces formation water till it finds a trap and a cap rock combination and that is where it will stop 
and it is important to establish the migration pathways to prove the work, working petroleum system okay and we will discuss about how to uh, what are the different types of migrations uh, that we observe in nature what is the mechanism by which hydrocarbon moves up later on so so far what we have talked about is a conventional hydrocarbon system and you can see the conventional hydrocarbon systems are shown here so the the top part is say for example if we look at this particular trap <coughs> and if we analyze this of course this has this has a structure which is the trap this is the seal this is the top seal or the cap rock and then of course there is a source rock from where the hydrocarbon has generated so is true for this one this has a trap like an anticlinal trap you can see it is actually uh, it's it's not filled to spill but it is it is filled to uh, to some it is underfilled structure also as a source rock it also has a cap rock so all the essential elements of a uh, successful hydrocarbon system is present in these two types of conventional um, reservoirs right now hydrocarbon is not only ex extracted from such carbon uh, high conventional reservoirs it is sometimes also extracted from say coal you know which is at a very shallow depth you know compared to a hydrocarbon reservoir this is at a very shallow depth and the methane which comes out of coal we call it as coal bed methane and in this particular case we will study coal bed methane in details of course because that's one of my um, most favorite uh, research areas if you like as well so coal bed methane that is where you don't really need separate um source rock reservoir rock or a trap okay so the coal itself acts as the reservoir rock acts, acts as the trap and acts as the source rock and we will discuss that how so is true for um you know sh shell gas as well as um shell oil okay so there the shell layer itself acts as the reservoir acts as the um Still acts as the uh, source rock. Okay, so we will see these two specifically: uh, shell gas and as well as coal bed methane, which are some of the most important uh, hydrocarbon reservoirs. Okay, and last but not the least, there is something called tide gas sand. Tide gas sand is like uh, these are sandstone reservoirs, but extremely low permeability reservoirs. And uh, because of such low permeabilities, it also doesn't uh, sometimes require the presence of a um, presence presence of all the necessary elements of a uh, conventional hydrocarbon. There is also something called basin-centered gas. So we will briefly touch upon them later on when we discuss about hydrocarbons. Okay, when we discuss about unconventional. But what we have discussed so far is an active petroleum system. Which, which requires a source rock, reservoir rock, cap rock, <coughs> and a trap, and the migration pathways, okay? And that defines the success of a conventional hydrocarbon system. So I will stop it here, and we will continue with the discussion um, on Monday. Thank you very much.